Welcome to Military and History Channel. I hope you'll enjoy. He shed so much blood that Muslims and Christians believed he was the Antichrist. He was with so many women that 24 million people today are thought to be his descendants. From the moment he was born, the world has never been the same. He is the greatest sovereign Genghis Khan that history has ever seen. Senghis, whose real name is Timusin, was betrayed by his closest relatives and had to live secretly in the forest with his mother and siblings when his father was poisoned by enemy tribes during his journey with his father when he was an eight-year-old boy in the Mongolian steppes. These difficult days would play an important role in his development. Because according to his own words, when his whole family was about to die of hunger, his brother did not share the fish he caught with them. Thereupon, Sengiz had to kill his brother. It is difficult to live in the steppe, it is so cold that even the ice is cold, so dermatologists describe the most difficult years of his life as his childhood spent in secret in the Mongolian steppes. Worse things would happen to him in his youth. In those years, after Genghis was defeated by his enemies, he was sold as a slave in China and displayed in a cage for more than a year. According to Sengiz, he was displayed like a monkey in a cage. An old Buddhist monk came to him and asked Genghis to forgive them, because he saw that he would become a great inn in the future and destroy the whole world, and he had only one wish. He begged not to demolish the Buddhist temple named Yudin at the top of the mountains in return for helping him raise it to ten. Indeed it would be. Genghis raised the Chinese, killed millions of people and destroyed all temples and places of worship. But the devotee never touched his temple. He never forgot the help of the old Buddhist and the promise he made to him. After Genghis Khan brought together the nomadic tribes in Central Asia and conquered China, he now had only one goal, to dominate the whole world and head to the West. In the cities he besieged, he certainly does not forgive anyone if there is resistance against him. The army had sworn to show no pity, woman, man, or child. For this reason, the greatest massacres took place in the resisting Turkish lands. What happened in Bokhara is one of the most important examples of this. Bokhara was one of the most developed and crowded cities in Asia at that time. Genghis Khan's target was now this important city. The Turks in the city believed that he was the Antichrist because they heard what Genghis had done to his other conquests, and they did not know that if he resisted, he would leave no stone unturned. The notables of Buhari sent a delegation to Genghis Khan for the safety of the city and the people, asking him to demolish mosques, burn books, and put people to the sword. In return, they would surrender. Sinjizan agreed, and the twelve gates of the city were opened to the Mongol army, and after entering, Sengi said his word that will be written in bloody letters in that history. Don't destroy mosques, don't put people close to the sword, bury them alive, don't burn books, throw them into the stream. Nobody can tell me that you didn't keep your word. Like I said, I didn't put anyone to the sword. He said that he did not burn the books and did not wash the mosques. In the city of Bokhara, which was known to have a population of more than one million at that time, not a single chicken or a child survived after the occupation. They were all buried alive. But that was not what he wanted. Sengiz had expectations beyond conquering the whole world. He wanted eternity to be immortal. For this reason, he greatly valued the priests and shamans and always had a priest with him. An old Buddhist once asked a priest about the secret of immortality. The old man said to Genghis Khan that the more women you are with, the longer your life will be. For this reason, in every city he occupied, he took dozens of women to bed and married dozens of voices. He even had relationships with so many women that he is estimated to have more than 20 million grandchildren worldwide today. In our old world, the most surviving person is Genghis Khan himself. As the Mongols progressed to the west by shedding blood, fear was increasing in the Muslim and Christian geography. So much so that when Muslims described the Mongols, they described them as ruthless Gog Magnus with big heads, short stature, 
wide bodies, and small eyes. The Christians were saying that the Antichrist Jesus had emerged and would invade Europe. Maybe they were right because Genghis Khan killed 10% of the world's population at that time, i.e. 40 million people, and conquered half of the world. Even though he did not interfere with the freedom of religion and belief in the lands he occupied, he remained faithful to the shaman traditions and Tengri belief until the end of his life, and there is only one religion for his descendants. He also testified that he is a Tengri religion. The ambassadors who invited him to Islam or Christianity in times of war. He punished this by accepting it as an insult to himself and reminding him of the boiler this mighty, sovereign ruler. He had an army and could not defeat it in his lifetime. Dogs would look for a place to run whenever they saw a dog. This has always been the subject of jokes among his friends and family. So, how did a stepman, whose childhood and youth passed in trouble, manage to become the cruelest and greatest ruler in history? Han summed it up in these words. I thought, I thought a lot. I've thought a lot more than any human has ever thought. At the same time, Genghis Khan clearly obeyed the rules accepted among the Mongols, known as the Laws of the Steppe. However, he also made important additions to them. Some of the rules that Genghis Khan added are as follows. Whoever makes a mistake on the battlefield will be punished by the commander there. Losers have no right to impose conditions. The penalty for resistance is death. Families of defeated enemies are divided equally among the soldiers. A soldier can take as many concubines as he wants. Children from concubines are considered natural children and receive an equal share of the inheritance. The penalty for helping one of them by getting between two people who are fighting is death. He who buys goods from others three times and goes bankrupt three times is punished with the death penalty after his third bankruptcy. The penalty for lying is death. The penalty for a Mongolian conversion is death. The meat of any animal is edible. The penalty for banning one of these is death. However, who wanted to slaughter the animal, we tied his feet and cut his stomach. Is it then to kill him by squeezing his heart with his hand? Only the meat of the animal killed in this manner is edible, and the preliminary penalty for not providing food and accommodation for travelers is death. It is permissible to drink every day, but it is forbidden to get drunk more than three times a month during wartime. The merchant's goods are confiscated and the penalty is death. The penalty for choosing a sect of any religion is death. A Mongolian man sentenced to death can kill himself by breaking his back if he wishes. This is a very old Mongolian tradition. If nobles were to be executed among the Mongols, it was done in what was considered a noble death. In other words, they would break their backs and leave them in the steppe. These are just a part of Genghis Khan's laws. He was one of the toughest leaders the steppe had ever seen. He ruled half the world. He killed as many as 40 million people in these wars. Maybe he didn't find immortality. But his name has been engraved in the memories as immortal and will continue to be considered by the whole world as the greatest ruler in history forever. When he died, everyone involved in the sighting was killed so that his burial would not be located according to ancient Central Asian tradition. It is thought that a riverbed was diverted and buried under the river, possibly in Mongolia. After his death, his children and grandchildren further expanded the borders of the empire. From the Arabian Peninsula to the middle of Europe, beyond the Chinese Sea, to the mountains of India, to Moscow, two-thirds of the world was included in the Mongolian Empire and Genghis wrote his name to eternity. All Mongols were afraid of thunder. Only Genghis Khan could overcome this fear. To those who ask how he did it, I have nowhere to hide anymore. I forgot fear. He said that the sky god helped to overcome fear. So when still thunder in Central Asia? It is believed that Genghis Khan followed the Mongols. You can subscribe to my channel to get more content.